Hello, you find us today at, I believe, 108 Queen's Road, where for many years we've had a, uh, a centre that's provided very, very important support and life-improving support for a significant number of our folk living here. As a result of a wonderful event that took place in Felixstowe in January, and it was the Felixstowe Health and Wellbeing event that took place at Orwell Road, we met the lady on my left, young Jackie. And I understand the manager of the complex we're now sat in here at uh, Queen's Road. So would you like to introduce yourself so we don't get our ceremonies confused? Okay. <laughs> Hello to everybody. My name's Jackie O'Mahony and I am currently the manager here. Um, I've been here for six years this year and I'm very keen to keep this service running as is Leading Lives and we will tell you a bit more about that. Right. Um, and we've got um, myself here as the manager. We've got a lovely staff team. We've got Carol, our business support. Mm -hmm. um, she works here two days a week. We've got Marilyn, who's our resident cook. Yes. We've got Steve, who's our relief cook. We've got Rhoda, who is our housekeeper. Um, all these members of staff have been here for around 17 years, 14 years. It's a really and, and things long are time. changing. The, the are. structure, the organisation. They in are. fact, from what we said briefly, yeah. and we'll go into this later, is, is that effectively you're moving towards a management structure not dissimilar to the library. Would that yes. be right? In yes. so far as you are effectively becoming a, a cooperative. Yes, we are. You are. So what we really want, what the purpose of coming here today mm -hmm. was to show our viewer what type of services, yeah. what facilities okay. we have. Now, we tried to get the hens, but yes. sensibly they hid away. Oh. And I can't say I blame them. They're it's not cold and there's snow on the ground. <laughs> so perhaps we can come back in the spring or the summer. Oh, that'd be lovely. When, when yeah. you know, the, your, your wonderful garden, I love the leeks, so oh, they, they can supplement your fresh food. Really important. It is, Michael. it is. Very, very important. So if we could just say, how do people access this particular service? Okay. Um, how often it's available? What time frame yep. is it available over? Okay. So if you could tell our viewer, what it is they could expect, or, or actually how they would access the service, really? What, um, the way to go through um, a referral process, you can go through your GP, you can self-refer here right. by giving us a telephone call, or um, go through to Customer First, and we can provide a telephone number for that. Right. Um, go through to Customer First, explain your circumstances, the, um, an, an assessment is then completed, mm -hmm. um, that could include a financial assessment as well, and we would be then contacted with the details, again, phone the families, phone the people that um, are, are needing our service, Right. they come along for a, a visit for a day. So they have a sample. Yeah, they right. have a taste today, which is really important, it and is. I think this is where the support workers come in. Mm. Um, it is about supporting people, supporting people's needs. Right. They're so individual, just like you and I. Oh, absolutely. Um, Sam, Linda, Nikki. Um, right. Oh, I lost my thread there. Do you have to do that again? Yeah. Sam, Nikki, Linda, Joy. Um, we've got brilliant support workers. Thank you. Getting to know the people, just that initial contact so and your that confidence. So your client base is what, from young people to old people or old people? Or, or do uh, you have different things on different days, right. different, different groups? Currently, we're not a registered service. Right. So we say that we support adults and older people. Right. The youngest customer we had was 54. Right. Now, that was nearly three years ago. Um, it's very difficult to actually put people into a particular service. Yes. It is about needs led, and right. that is so important. It is person centred care. It's about supporting that person right. and, and being flexible about that. And, and I think the mindset with the team mm. is exactly that. So, the, the, the folk that you're looking after for the period that are yeah. here, are they um, very dependent, not so dependent, independent? I mean, what, what we do know, don't we, is that we've got um, a huge growth. And, and we should celebrate it, we don't, yeah, of, of people living forever. Yeah. Like I think the 105s will be doubling yeah. in the next 10 years. 
Um, but a, a consequence of that, of course, is within our community we have a lot more folk with early onset dementia or Alzheimer's. Are you able to cope or help there? We do provide a service. Right. We have two services here. We have what we call a mainstream service for people that are socially isolated. Right. Lots and lots of barriers for people to come out of their home mm -hmm. and might need an, an element of support. And that right. could vary from coming out of the door, could be equipment, it could be access, could be financial as well. Right. And confidence. And yes. I think that's the biggest thing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, people's well being. If they're short term illness, long term illness, deaths of partners as well right. so to come here and build that confidence is a big big step so you'd help them over the grieving period that's that sort of part, yes benefit. and the well-being around supporting activities and interests and nutrition oh, that nutrition is so is, important yes dr bartlett was very keen on nutrition as a part of recovery and rehabilitation so it was important. nutritious food and i i think we've been fortunate enough just to get a, a, a shot of the kitchens but what yep. we weren't able to see was the joint of beef that was being prepared oh. for the, today's lunch and i don't think we've got time sadly oh. as much as we'd love to to stay here and, and oh. join you in it okay. but next time for us but it is all local produce and so, so you source your yes, food from local suppliers yes we do, do rosalie oh yes and um, yes. our local sausage shop which is all local produce yes um the um, bakers in Walton High oh, Street, right. which is all baked on the premises, Indeed and they it is. deliver it to us free. Our local, how can we not buy fish? Our local a absolute. produce. So it's mm -hmm. and it's poor. So, so you are putting your, your, your money where your mouth is yes. on the basis you are supporting local yeah. ads. We do pay a little bit extra, but yes. the the consequence Service. of that is that they're still going to be there to provide us mm -hmm. with the vegetables and the fruit and the good quality food for the customers that come into the service. Okay, now a key thing, and, and it's something that I've been conscious of for a very long time, certainly when we were looking after our own family relatives, is what support does the carer to, to say, a particularly uh, high dependent yeah. uh, relative or friend, one would assume that you give them a break, do you, Eff effectively? It is, Michael, and I think that is so important. This is where the dual support comes in. Right. Because it is about caring for, the cared for, and the carer. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the person's support network as well. It could be friends, neighbours. That's what people are being encouraged to do as well, as right. well as professional care and support. We've got brilliant agencies. Home Instead is a fantastic agency. They do provide exactly what they say they're going to provide. The right. element of support is, and flexibility is about people knowing what they're actually doing. Right. Now, so on that basis, here you're in a, in a position for somebody who's newly arrived yeah. with a friend or, or family member who may be diagnosed with, yeah. with Alzheimer's or, or whatever, or needs yeah. help. You actually can act as a catalyst for information Definitely. and other service deliverers yes. on how that life would be better. Now, I just made a quick note. Yeah. You're, you're, you've now been sort of organised into um, five sort of um, delivery streams, mm -hmm. if that might be yeah. an appropriate word, of supported yeah. living, opportunities, community support, delivering a community hub, and short breaks, which yes. appears to go as far as actually a supported holiday structure. Definitely. Which I could imagine for somebody yeah. wheelchair bound or whatever would be would be a lifesaver. Well, so, we spoke, so really, we need to come back to it at some stage, yes. perhaps, to, to to go through those individual things. Yeah. But um, the delivery from 108 Queens Road isn't that or do you access those services through here if the need arises we could make referrals as well and give that information to carers and customers and mm. families because younger people have their parents Indeed. that support them as well um, we've got lots of volunteers that come in here that have right. got a variety of needs and i think that's what queen's road is all about we mm. don't just um, provide people with a service it's about volunteers coming in and giving us their expertise as well and their time. Yes. So it is about a community. It's not just for a service provision. It yes. is it is in So so the growing hub it, it yes. could could be exactly that. Yeah. And I think we're not precious about what we do. We will say to people about the fax transport. You know, that is yes. a community transport. Oh yes. And without Very that important. that vital link to bring people in from their homes to the day centre 
yes. that, that would be very difficult. And the barriers then become harder and harder to overcome. So really what so. we're trying to do is to increase the interconnectivity of Definitely. groups and make, ma make the viewer, because what, what I find um, difficult yeah. And, and often the case that folk aren't aware that service is there no. and because they've never used it by the time they get to the point that they may wish to yes. use it it's already disappeared because they weren't aware that it was at risk or a threat. so what, what is the future do you see from this side I mean um, I love the fact you've got a garden there oh, it's so you're actually mm -hmm. growing some of the food that you're going to end up yeah. eating but equally for those with a gardening interest who are now living in a, in a flat yes. or apartment, that yeah. must allow them to go back in and, and do things. And, and, and it's an engagement, isn't it? it? Absolutely, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it, it's about interrupt the well, me as much as you want. It's right. about the well-being, Michael. You know, everybody comes in here with different, a variety of things that, that actually need to support somebody mm. with communications, it could be making friends, having a nutritious meal, hot drinks throughout the day, medication, support and talking to somebody, yes. but also promoting the interest that I've probably had for many years. Absolutely. Which is why we've got the, the little chickens from yes. um, our little local school. Yes, I like that. They were nice. hatched and the children come in yeah. and we exchange chicken stories and <laughs> you know the interest is still there and for the younger generation to see that we do have older people, adults, yeah. and we're all kind of packaged differently and dressed up differently, and, and that's the diversity, and if we hide away from that, it's, it becomes a bit of a culture shock. So we are here, and everything is supported with what we do, um, and I think the intergenerational links is very, very important. Indeed it is. Yeah. So to wrap up, I think what we'll say is, this should give a taster of what the facility is, what is here. Mm -hmm. What we'll do um, after this short segment is you and I will probably have a further discussion okay. on some of the finance, uh, where it's going, what yes. its future will be. But th take this as your introduction to 108 Coons Road. Mm -hmm. If you're young and you're fit and you're charging about and you don't need this type of service, that's fine, but it's undoubtedly the case that members of your family or friends will. So make them aware that it's here and support it into the future so that when you get to the point that you may need it, it's still here. So thank you very much for joining us at Queen's Road today. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you very much. We're still here in 108 Queen's Road, uh, so we've already met Jackie, yeah. boss in chief. Mm -hmm. We have Samantha, I understand you're a newbie. Yeah, I am right? a newbie. <laughs> I am a newbie yeah. And what does newbie mean? A newbie means I've been here for about three years. So that's short term, is yes. it? Here? So yeah. how long have you been here? Three years, the same as Sam, right. we're both newbies. Um, I'm actually into double figures. Are you I, mean, I think I've actually been here 16 years. So on that basis, wow. it's, a, it's a nice place to work. Yes. Or, or there, there's satisfaction in what you're doing. Yes. Definitely. Okay, so the, your, your job function is to what? To, to assist or help or deliver the service and care that your day visitor may need. Right. Would that we, be right, we, Joy, over no, that period? Uh, I want people to be as independent as possible because most of our customers are living in the community yes. with the support of um, perhaps various care agencies or through family. And uh, it's important to keep them as independent as possible. Indeed. So that's what sort of mental agility, physical, yes. that that whole sort of bit. Yes. yes. How does the carer fit in? Uh, assuming they have a family or friend carer, because one would assume if they're here with you, then that carer can actually go and do some other things. So they're not doing 24/7, 365 days a year. 
which in lots of cases leads to, uh, leads to the breakdown of the carer. Definitely, definitely. Which means that we collectively are in a bigger problem because the carer has failed. So you support the carer? Yes, we do. We, we can uh, enable them to access the services what are there and they're not always um, aware of them. Right. So you, you could be viewed as a, as a sort of health enhancing preventative service, which is what the NHS is supposed to have tried to head towards. Rather than treating illness, it would prevent them. So the service you give actually ensures that what up to 70 people in, in the peninsula can be supported and have a better quality of life than they would have if they were back, perhaps with their carer. And one of the things which I find is remarkable, and I'm not sure whether the viewer is aware of this, is you actually source and cook your own food, and you actually have hens who deliver eggs. That's right. And some of your folk <laughs> actually are wise enough to till the garden to grow vegetables. Yeah. They can also, so that's a real round robin, wonderful bit to yeah, be doing, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's really important as well um, for people that have got perhaps memory problems or um, with dementia as well, Yeah. Uh, perhaps feeling low in mood. It's really good to get outside, and do fresh something. air, yeah. and regain um, lost skills, because most people years ago did have chickens, tent allotments, and um, all right. yeah, I mean, we're all learning yeah. as well. Yeah, it's um, all, yes, life is always learning. Well, thank you very much. Sorry for disrupting your morning, because I think you've got a cure folk you're about <laughs> yeah, to present yeah, with yeah, tea and yeah, coffee, <laughs> and I understand you don't do biscuits as much. You now do toast. toast yeah. What a wonderful yeah. idea and what a lovely idea. So thank, thank you, you Samantha, even though you are a newbie, <laughs> young lady and joy. Thank you very much. Thank you.